When you're sitting at your computer or laptop planning a flight or trying to find out some information, one of the best resources at your fingertips is a website called Skyvector. It combines interactive aeronautical charts with most of the data you'd find in other FAA publications, along with some flight planning tools. Let's plan a flight on the U.S. East Coast real quick. We could start by bringing up our departure airport. We'll take off at a college park, so we zoom into that and right-click on it. We'll click the Plan button next to the airport. We could do the same thing with our destination. We're flying north to Pocono Mountain in Pennsylvania, and we'll click Plan for that airport. A nice magenta line has been drawn between departure and destination, with a text bubble showing what the magnetic course and distance is. Now, if we're flying VFR, we notice that our flight path takes us through the surface Bravo of BWI Airport, so we can change our route to go west of it under the 2500 shelf by clicking and holding along the line and dragging it out to around where we want to go. When we release the mouse button, we get options for what to add to the route. There's an airport and VOR nearby, or we could select a nearby fix or the exact latitude longitude coordinates of the spot we dragged the line to. Let's use the nearby fix, Brave, and we see that adding that as an intermediate waypoint does keep us below the 2500 shelf. If we click flight plan in the upper left, we see the departure and destination we selected, and in the en route box, we see the fix Brave as well. These can be typed in, as well as clicked in directly from the map. Let's say we want to go IFR. We can look at route suggestions by clicking that in the flight plan box. College Park and Pocono aren't a well-used airport pair, but if they were, we might see previously cleared routes issued in ATC clearances to give us an idea of what to plan. Instead, we have a Victor Airway created route. If we click on it, the map updates. Let's have a look at it and update it as we need. We could swap out the VFR sectional for an IFR and route chart by hitting World Low. We could also use the actual IFR sectionals, just realize that they'll cut off as we fly into a different region. First, I want to change that waypoint at Cleet. I happen to know that most IFR clearances out of College Park have you joining the airway at Belts, so I'll drag from Cleet to Belts. Notice in the route box on the top left how that's been updated as well. Having a look at the rest of the route, it looks like we're keeping to Victor Airways going VOR to VOR mostly. This is probably fine, though if we're GPS equipped, I might do a shortcut by going direct destination from, say, Lancaster VOR, but we'll keep it as is. Next, we could set up our aircraft profile for some planning calculations and filing. Input our N number in the aircraft field and click the plane symbol to bring up some performance info. These are already filled out, but you'd use your POH to fill out yours. Same thing for filing info. Next, we could put in a cruising altitude. I noticed the highest GPS MEA on the airways we're using was 4,500, so 5,000 feet should work for an IFR flight eastbound. Let's set our departure time as well. We'll use local time, 11 a.m. on Saturday the 5th, and this will convert to Zulu for us. With all that info entered, it'll use our performance numbers, altitude, route, and wind forecast to compute an estimated time of an arrival, an hour and 12 minutes, as well as a fuel burn, 10.9 gallons. We could click Navlog to get a full breakdown of this from each segment of the route. Our ground speed and route will be fast at about 135 knots. With a forecast wind out of the south-southeast at over 30 knots, this makes sense for our northeast bound flight. If we click Briefing and Filing, we have all our information populated to file a flight plan and get a full, legal, and logged briefing from Flight Service. We could get some weather information using the layers on the top right. First, we could see weather radar. Nothing in the immediate area, but if we zoom out, we could see some heavy rain bands in the Midwest, and we can animate it to see how it's trending. We could pull up airmets and sigmets. It looks like our route has an IFR airmet in effect now. If we click text weather, we could see why. The colored dots indicate flight categories. Green is VFR, like at York here with only a few clouds. And we see IFR and low IFR in other areas like Coatesville, which is showing fog and 100 foot ceilings. TFRs can be brought up. Looks like there's a VIP TFR just east of our route in effect starting tomorrow night. Skyvector gives us procedure plates as well. If we click on our destination and hover over the text of the airport, we see procedures available. We could see the approach plate for the RNAV Runway 5, for example. Here's one really cool feature we can look at if we go back to Maryland and pull up the procedures at Frederick. Notice the asterisks next to some of the procedures, indicating changes have been made to them recently. Let's look at the airport diagram to see an example. 
there's now a symbol on the top of the window with two pages. If we click on it, we get a slider to compare the original and updated versions of the diagram. And what we see is that taxiway echo in the middle of the field has been shortened. It no longer goes all the way from the terminal to runway 23, and the high-speed exit for the runway has been renamed Alpha 3. Great knowledge to have.